Real quick, I just want to say thank you to each and every one of you who have ever interacted with any of these sponsors that I choose to link up with. I just want you guys to know that it genuinely makes a significant difference in the lives of Ashley and myself, so it does not go unnoticed. And of course, my hope is that these products or services really do add some value to your lives, but ultimately, I just want you guys to know that even taking advantage of the free trial, clicking on the links, trying out the product, it really, really helps Ashley and I. It means the world to me. So genuinely, I just wanted to take a second to thank all of you. They're so easy to skip over. I know they can be frustrating, but I'm telling you, YouTube alone would be a very different place without the help of sponsors and Patreon and all of those other things. So I just wanted to, from the bottom of my heart, say thank you. Welcome to Electrified. It's your host, Dylan Loomis. So first up today, Marco RP, who has specialized in supercharging, shared this front page of a report that is titled Supercharger Charge Post V3 V4 Dual. So naturally, there's now a lot of speculation, but let's focus on what we know. This was from January earlier this year. Sawyer said that Tesla plans to increase V3 supercharging speeds to 324 kilowatts in the third quarter of this year, which we are quickly approaching, and V3 currently sits at 250 kilowatts. At the time, he also said next-gen V4 superchargers will be released soon after. He also clarified that new 324 kilowatt rate would be for V3 only, not the prior version V2. Then on the same day, Marco replied to Sawyer saying, I was told they could upgrade the V3s to reach 370 kilowatts max. Drive Tesla Canada did say we were able to confirm the planned increase in speeds, but they didn't say if they were confirming the 324 or the 370. We did learn this from their sources, however. We learned about the magic dock saying in the third quarter of this year, meaning 2022, Tesla would have a built-in adapter that will allow third-party access at select supercharger locations. The stall will feature just one cable, but be able to plug into both Teslas and other EVs. So maybe it's just the regular supercharging cable with a dock for an adapter that you can slap on there and then charge your non-Tesla EV. Much of the speculation was that this dual meant that the V4 iteration of superchargers would have two different cables, which is still possible at this point. However, it's also possible it's just one cable with that magic dock with the adapter. So so perhaps V4 has more to do with the dual charging nature rather than an increase in speeds if we get the V3 increase in speeds as it was reported earlier this year. However, most of it is speculation, so we'll just wait and see for sure how this plays out. However, the point here is Tesla is planning upgrades to the supercharger network to be rolled out over the next 12 months, both in terms of speed and compatibility. Tesla's trade-in estimator tool is back live again, so I'll include a link below if you want to check it out. You just plug in your VIN and it'll give you an estimate. I saw some funny comments about this one online today, but it looks like Tesla is no longer providing the key fob on S and X deliveries as of July 1st this year. Yes, some new owners are still getting them, but it's expected that that's going to change and eventually no one will. Tesla's reason, their statistics showed the majority of owners use their mobile device as a key and that no longer offering the key fob as standard equipment would cut down on e-waste. Ultimately, this is one of those personal preference or principle type of things. Of course, many people are upset, feeling like Tesla is making people pay more, especially on the high-end vehicles, while continually removing things. And it is what it is, but just so you know, you can still buy them on the Tesla website, for 175 US dollars. According to an internal email, Tesla is now switching over all of the 19 inch wheels on the Model S to summer tires. Switching previously from yes, all season tires, all Model S cars with the 19 inch Tempest wheels made on or after July 2nd will be fitted with the summer tires and it applies to cars destined for both the US and Canada. Tesla says this is being done to provide the best tires for Model S customers for the current season. So under that expectation, as we approach the fall and winter, we would expect them to shift back to all season tires. Once again, though, that's just speculation. A user on Reddit shared this image of a supercharger site in Lexington, Kentucky with a Starlink dish enabled. It fits in perfectly with this news that Tesla is planning on expanding these supercharger locations that do indeed have Starlink Wi-Fi access. However, DTC saying at least four new locations coming online this week in the US and the UK. 
So far, users are reporting their Teslas are automatically connecting to the network, and they're saying that the speeds are fast. However, we need somebody to actually run some tests. And then the question will become, at a busy supercharger site with multiple people trying to use the Wi-Fi, how will it hold up? Only time will tell. So there's myriad reasons for Tesla to do this, not the least of which is to reduce its cellular data usage. And not only that, but it will of course provide Tesla users without premium connectivity in their vehicles, access to certain streaming services while charging. We got Tesla's official data for the month of June in Shanghai from the CPCA and Troy saying that the production was 70,928, which indeed is a new record. When it comes to deliveries, Tesla actually sold 78,906 in China and exported 968 for the month of June. And don't forget what the CPCA Secretary General had to say. He expected car sales in July to increase around 20% from one year ago, while demand could further strengthen in the fourth quarter, leading to strong growth for the whole year. Plugging that data into our table for Giga Shanghai, you can see that for the month of June, total deliveries is indeed a brand new record. Previously, the high was 70,800. And moving over to production, the previous high was actually January of this year, 68,100. That number has also been beaten for the month. So fingers crossed that there are no more shutdowns in Shanghai so Tesla can keep this progress rolling. Reuters reported this late last night saying that Samsung was talking to Tesla about possibly supplying camera modules but saying that they can't reveal anything about the deal size at this time. Now, if you go back a few weeks earlier, you may remember this report that Tesla and Samsung reportedly already signed a huge $4 billion camera module supply deal. So now the question becomes, is this Reuters report talking about a separate deal for something different? Is it going to bring more details to this specific deal? We don't really know at this time. Monroe Live released another video talking about the actual structure of the structural pack. Don't really have a ton to add. One thing I will say, they have talked about the powder coating on this actual structural unit, and I think it may be a corrosion thing. If you think about it, this really is now serving as the floor of the vehicle. So right under the carpet, if people spill stuff over time, you wouldn't want that corroding. So the Monroe team was wondering why they may have done that powder coating, and that may be part of the reason. As always though, the full video will be linked below. This is another Tesla topic I would love an update on. I would love one of these interviewers to ask Elon what's going on at the Lathrop facility where they're now building mega packs, so we think. Autopilot on Twitter did a drone flyover of Giga Nevada and spotted this massive collection of Tesla mega packs. Each one is three megawatt hours, and someone counted saying that there were 500 mega packs spotted in this picture. Doing the math, that's about 1.5 gigawatt hours of mega pack capacity sitting in the Giga Nevada lot. So are these waiting to be delivered? Are they waiting for a certain part? We're not really sure. However, the context of this is very important. If you look here at Tesla's storage deployments in megawatt hours over the last few quarters, you can see the best quarter last year was actually 1.29 gigawatt hours. And for the entire duration of 2021, Tesla delivered about four gigawatt hours of storage capacity. So right now it has 1.5 gigawatt hours sitting at Giga Nevada. That's almost 40% of the entire year's capacity presumably waiting to be delivered. My biggest question becomes, is this production for the last few months that just has been accumulating and hasn't been delivered because like I said, maybe it's waiting for parts, or is this new Lathrop facility actually producing mega packs and the production rate has increased significantly? If you go back to when the Lathrop facility actually broke ground, it was September of last year, which would mean we're about 10 months removed from that breaking ground is that enough time to get the factory up and running and actually be pumping out mega packs? It seems pretty quick, but it's not out of the realm of possibility. Here we have a very interesting article from Inside EVs. They say a private network of Fortune 500 C-level executives basically did a study about some of these employees that were fired at Tesla and where they're finding new jobs. The organization has tracked Tesla's talent after leaving Tesla, analyzing 457 former salaried employees over the past 90 days using data from LinkedIn. 90 ex-Tesla employees found new jobs at rival EV startups Rivian and Lucid, 56 at the former, 34 at the latter, 
only eight of them joined legacy car manufacturers like Ford and GM. Further than that, 179 of those 457 prior Tesla employees that were tracked actually joined tech companies like Apple, Amazon, Google, Meta, and Microsoft. Great news for those previous Tesla employees as they are seemingly very desirable in the market right now. And you may be thinking, well, isn't this bad news for Tesla? They're going to lose some of that IP to other companies, maybe on a very small scale, but absolutely nothing to worry about. Tesla's lead right now in dominance is so unassailable that genuinely, I don't think there's much for Tesla to worry about. And this organization of those C-suite execs is actually called Punks and Pinstripes. They put together this flow chart, which I thought was pretty cool. I'm not gonna go through it, but go ahead and pause the screen or take a screenshot. Ford has issued a new recall for 100,000 US vehicles over fire risks. The vehicle is impacted with 2.5 liter hybrid and plug-in hybrid engines. In some cases, significant quantities of engine oil and fuel vapor may be released that could accumulate near ignition sources, resulting in a potential underhood fire. In case you weren't aware, no, Tesla is not the only company laying off employees in the EV autonomous space right now. Argo AI has been forced to let go about 150 workers this week, which represents about 6% of the company's 2,000 person workforce. Back in 2017, Ford invested $1 billion in Argo, and then Volkswagen did something similar, investing $2.6 billion in the startup. And you may recall seeing that Walmart was doing some autonomous delivery testing with Argo in select cities. Dan Ives from Wedbush raised his price target on Rivian stock from 30 up to 40 saying it appears the Rivian story is now finally starting to turn the corner, slowly but surely, mainly citing production now starting to pick up and some of the supply chain and chip woes hopefully easing in the quarters to come. So I'm a big beach water boat kind of guy. Now I don't have a boat, but one day I would like to, that would be cool. However, this is exciting news. Silent Yachts will be the first serial yacht producer in the world to install the maritime version of Starlink on board their solar electric catamarans. And it really does seem like Elon is genuinely fired up about future products as he was talking about Starlink for Boats, sharing a SpaceX tweet with some nice photos. Then he was asked, when will we see Tesla boats? That would be amazing. Elon said a flying electric boat would be sick. Yes, Elon, yes it would. Add it to the list of future products. And lastly, I thought this was cool. Elon actually backing up what he says he's about and that he's so concerned about the population collapse and the slowing birth rate. He said that kids are worth it if at all possible. He's planning to increase childcare benefits at his company significantly. Hopefully other companies do the same. The Musk Foundation plans to donate directly to families. Hopefully details to be announced next month. Personally, I love seeing things like this because nowadays it seems like everybody is an expert at talking about problems. Very few people are interested in actually implementing solutions. Elon seems to be implementing many solutions, which is one of many reasons why I'm a fan of his. That'll do it for today though. Please take a second to like the video if you did. Hope you guys have a wonderful and a safe weekend and a huge thank you to all of my Patreon supporters.